Hello, I'm Jerry Riley with You Can Check Us Out Now. I'd like to welcome you to today's program. We're going to have a very special guest joining us uh, momentarily, Mr. Andy Tucker, the economic development person here in Okima and Ofusky County. Uh, but before I get started, I would like to remind you to shop local. Uh, our local merchants really need your support uh, with the uh, on online uh, shopping with Amazon and the big box stores. They really need your support especially during these times with the pandemic. I would like to spotlight one of our local merchants today, Dr. Uh, Claude Evans here in Okima. Uh, his clinic is the Old Fusky County Veterinary Clinic. Uh, Dr. Evans has been a veterinarian for many, many years. He was uh, actually uh, on the Board of Regents for Oklahoma State University for over 16 years, was the president of the Regents for a period of time. Uh, he is still very active with his veterinary clinic uh, uh, located just outside of town uh, at 2208 East Columbia Street, Okima. His phone number is 918-623-1166. So if you have any needs for a vet, I highly recommend you call Dr. Evans. Uh, he's been the uh, my veterinarian for over 20 years and has done an exemplary job. And I highly recommend uh, Dr. Evans to you. So if you, again, have any needs for veterinary services, please give Dr. Evans a call. Throughout my interview today with uh, Mr. Tucker, we're going to be scrolling information across the bottom about some of our local merchants. Uh, please uh, write their phone numbers down, give them a call, and I know they would love to hear from you. We're very privileged today to have Mr. Tucker with us. Andy, how are you doing today? Hey, doing great, Jerry. Well, uh, you asked me a moment ago if we were going to mourn the loss of OSU last night. I guess we could spend <laughs> just a just a moment to say, uh, boy, that was a that was a tough loss last night. Yeah, it was a great season, but a tough loss. Well, you see, I have the orange colors down there uh, on the banner because I know you're a graduate of OSU, and yes, uh, so even though they lost, we're still uh, go Pokes, right? Absolutely. Andy, I appreciate you joining us today. And, uh, you know, we spent over two hours talking before this uh, interview. And so we're going to try to cover what we talked in two hours in about 10 or 15 minutes. And I know that's hard to do for someone like me that talks as slow as I talk. Uh, but Andy is the economic development uh, director for Ofusky County and for the city of Okima. Uh, I know one of the things right now that's being uh, talked about a lot is how we improve our downtown uh, area. Uh, we know that uh, curb appeal means a lot for shoppers coming into town. You know, what's going to entice them to stop and not keep going. And I know you're very active with Jane Hughes and the city council of coming up with some uh, grant money and some opportunities for upgrading our downtown district. And if you would spend a few minutes and tell us a little bit about what's going on and what your vision is for the city of Okima. Thanks, Jerry. No, it's, you're, you're exactly right. There are a lot of great things going on in Okima. And I want to begin by giving uh, the viewers kind of an overview of the economic development initiative that we've been under for a little over a year and a half in Okima. It's a partnership between the city of Okima, the Okfusky County Industrial Authority, and the Chamber of Commerce. And collectively, they've partnered, and from that, uh, they work with me or I work with them in trying to make change in Okima positive change. And we look at creating jobs, creating opportunities, stimulating growth around Interstate 40. And of course, downtown is a main focus of opportunity for Okima. Uh, in doing that, because of our time limit, I'll just focus on that discussion. Uh, there's been quite a bit of conversation of recent about you know, historic districts and the registry and those, and I understand fully some of the concerns that are there. What we're looking to do is to use a consulting firm to come in and meet with uh, the community and talk about what are some opportunities for downtown? What can we do? And these are nationally recognized consultants that have come to us from some relationships in the past and are wanting to work with us to look at placemaking, which is creating kind of a lifestyle in downtown, look at historic preservation and historic development, and also look at how to initiate our branding uh, program that we're in the midst of. The downtown, as we all look around and realize what, what can happen here, we all have a visual of what the best Okima can be. And for all of us, it's a little different. 
The important part is, as we look forward, is that we all have a voice in that conversation. Uh, what is it we want to see for ourselves, for our children, for our grandchildren as we grow Okima forward? And so none of us really know that idea or know what that answer is, but we know that we need a plan. We need to figure out how do we collectively move forward to a vision of Okima in 10 and 20 years. And these are things that don't happen in one year, two years. They really are long-term plays. And as we talked earlier, the discussion of what the master plan is, is the master plan is the development tool of the public. And so we have public meetings, we get public input, we engage the populace to that. And if the populace becomes interested in moving forward, we do it. The value proposition to us with these grants is that these grant writers have really solicited us to put this together. They're moving forward with it. We should know by July if we're funded to initiate this proposal and this project. At the same time, we have a grant with the National Endowment for the Arts that we submitted last year. Um, in total, it's about a $200,000 investment uh, into downtown into the entryways of Okima into just really increasing the curb appeal for the community. We think that we have a really strong chance of being funded this because we are unique. And that's something I think we often forget is that our heritage in this community brings us some opportunities, whether it be our tribal heritage with Muskogee Creek Nation, whether it be the Woody Guthrie heritage, whether it be our history of our residents before, which is unique and special in its own right. But the lifeblood to Okima are those things collectively and the value proposition of Interstate 40. With 17,000 people a day driving past Okima, how do we get more people in our stores on Main Street? We can look around Main Street, we can look around the county and we can pull so many. That's a set number of people and it's difficult to get people to move, especially after what we've experienced with this pandemic. But I-40 brings new blood every day right past Okima. So what is our opportunity to bring them into Okima? So we're looking at doing some of this, whether it be beautification of downtown, whether it be development of a Woody Guthrie music trail, which we're in the midst of, whether it be addressing, adding more murals to downtown, whether it be improvements to the entryways off of I-40, whether it be billboards on the interstate, whether it be improvement to our industrial park. Uh, there's just a lot of things uh, we joke about. We have a lot of plates spinning right now, but there's a lot of opportunity, some business creation going on, some companies that are looking to come here at this point in time. Um, the pandemic, although it's been really unusual for a lot of us, it hasn't really slowed down opportunity. What it has slowed down is the ability for us to get together as a public and communicate. And I'm really hopeful that over the coming months, as we get better optics to what is happening with the pandemic and the health condition of everybody where this, and everybody's well-being is considered, that we can come together. Andy, on the desk behind you or beside you, I see a, a sign you have propped up uh, that says this site uh, is eligible for free grant assistance. I like that word free. Uh, is that kind of part of what you're talking about and exactly what is that grant? How would somebody apply for it? And has that grant already been approved? Yes, sir. Thank you for pointing that out. And yes, it has been approved. It was $300,000 grant. Uh, through the Oklahoma Corporation Commission from the Environmental Protection Agency. And it's specifically focused to cleaning up and remediating our historic gas stations. Uh, one point in time, we had 40 to 50 gas stations in Okfuskey County. And those of us are in Okima. Those of us that have lived here have watched these in kind of a state of decline for most of our lifetimes. The issue for most of them has been the uh, concern about the underground fuel storage tanks that have been an environmental concern. In fact, banks have been unable to loan money on these facilities for years. What we're looking to do, and we already have several in the queue to make this happen, is to remediate these sites and give these owners, these new owners, a certificate uh, that shows that they're environmentally sound and been environmentally remediated. At that point in time, banks can loan money on them and, and things can move forward. So these Historic buildings, if, if you happen to be somebody that has a historic gas station or be interested in getting it remediated, please give me a call. I can connect you with the Oklahoma Corporation Commission. They have been wonderful partners in this, been over backwards. They, they've decided they just love Okima, and as we all know, that we, we understand why. Uh, but it's a, it's a pretty special program. And that phone number, Andy, is 918-623-6579. Is that correct? 
Yes, sir. Now, uh, currently, uh, under that grant, are there any projects currently underway uh, utilizing that grant uh, today? Yes, uh, there are four properties that have uh, moved forward with it, have worked with OCC, and I don't know that they've done any remediation at this point in time, but they're getting the contracts together to move that forward. Uh, a couple of the buildings have already just made some decisions of what businesses are going to become, and I'll, I'll just kind of let that unfold as it unfolds, but it is absolutely happening on Highway 62 and on Broadway. So uh, we've we anticipate that with that $300,000, we can possibly do 10 to 12 uh, businesses. And if once we get through that, then we'll look at additional funding going forward. But this is a time sensitive opportunity. Uh, when the money's gone, it's gone. And uh, we know that that opportunity is here now. So if you have interest, interest please give me a call and I'll, I'll, I'll move it forward. Uh, Andy, that the building on uh, North or West Broadway, um, to the old service station, is it, uh, I see it's being tore down. Is that part of the grant effort or is that just an individual effort? It is. It's, it's, part of, it's part of the grant effort, but it's also an individual effort. So they are part of this project. The OCC will coordinate having the underground fuel storage stakes removed and remediated, and the site will be kind of considered as part of that as well. So, uh, Work is already underway. Ground is not only uh, being broke, it's uh, being torn down. And, and uh, hopefully uh, um, it, it, we'll, we'll see something going up in that space uh, in the not too distant future. Yes, and, and the most important part of these is the remediation piece of them. You know, we, we like, especially with the old uh, gas stations, the historic nature of them, the heritage pieces they can be. But some of these, the reality of it is they, they're, they're past their point of return. So some of these properties will be leveled, but what the city will be left with and the owners will be left with is a remediated property that doesn't have uh, environmental hazards to it. And so some of these are not only could be businesses, but could be homes. That could be playgrounds, could be green spaces. It helps us in the evolution of this community, not only you know redevelop Broadway, but redevelop 62. And you know, fascinating fact I've learned through this project is that Highway 62 is a unique highway. It's a special highway in that it starts in El Paso and ends in Niagara Falls and comes through right through the middle of Okima. And we really always joke that, you know, Highway 66 gets all the love and what happens to, you know, my little Highway 62. I mean, it's kind of missing the love, it should feel. So we see that as a golden opportunity to one, celebrate some of the some of the heritage that we do have. And how do you magnify magnify that opportunity? Is Highway 62, can it become, as some have joked, the father road uh, of America where 66 is the mother road? We don't know. We think it's probably a little far out there, but we'll take every advantage we can get. That's right. You have to start somewhere, don't you? Certainly. Uh, what would be one of the common uh, anti misunderstanding uh, misunderstandings uh, with some of the business owners as to what uh, the city and you are trying to do? What would be uh, might be one of the biggest things that's being misunderstood? You know, I, I don't know that anything's understood. I just think there's an absence of has been an absence of discussion of what the wishes and dreams of the community is moving forward with downtown. And, you know, the merchants absolutely have to have a voice in that. And the city is also the authority in, in administering this oversight. Uh, as I've shared with people, I'm, I'm a firm believer in ordinance. And, but ordinance has, can't be created in a vacuum. It has to be created with a public input to it. And I think that's where we're leaning towards with this grant. And then how do we as a collective administer this moving forward? You know, I've heard some people show concern that we don't wanna to be told what we have to do and we don't want to be told this and that. And that's why the conversation is so important. In the absence of knowledge, there's fear. And I think that's where we are here. The consulting group, uh, Atlas out of Virginia, that we're working with, if this uh, program is funded, they would communicate with every downtown owner. They would communicate with the citizenry of Okima and they would talk about where do you see Okima going and how do you want to get there? And then we would look at how do we, how do we get there collectively? And I think that to your question, I think the absence of understanding, the absence of conversation and I blame that on the pandemic. I mean, we're all just uh, thirsty for times together to really get down and flesh things out. 
but there's a real element of concern in the air now, literally, that we have to be mindful to. But I'm hoping that's uh, rapidly changing. Well, Andy, I'm a thousand percent for what you're doing. I, I think, uh, you know, if we're not moving forward, we're moving backwards. I don't think you can stay in, in status quo. Uh, there's too many towns that I drive through on a daily basis that uh, you just see them on a decline. They've already declined and probably passed the point of no return. And uh, to see uh, you involved and and uh, our city leaders involved to, uh, you know, not stay status quo because we're not going to stay status quo. We're going to go one way or the other. And right. to see you involved in this and the community uh, uh, needs to get behind and learn more about what it is you're doing uh, so that we have a place that our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren can enjoy uh, for years just as we have. And, uh, you know, to, to, you know, have some, um, you know, where are we going? And you, you put it well a while ago. Where do we want to be? How do we, and then we determine how do we want to get there? And I think most of our business owners would get behind it. It's going to increase their revenue, their sales. It's going to increase the property values of their property. And uh, I, I just really appreciate what you're doing. But I, I want to have another um, topic come into play briefly. We're, we're about out of time. Uh, but one of the things that we hear a lot about today, not only in Ofusky County, but throughout the state of Oklahoma, is the growing um, uh, of, of grow houses, just an in continued growth of grow houses. And uh, one of the questions I would have for you, because you're also the economic development uh, director for Ofusky County, do you see the... Uh, the influx of grow houses, and right now I think we have 68 to 70 grow houses currently in Ofusky County. Do you see that possibly being counterproductive as to what we're trying to do in the downtown area? You know, I, I really see both sides of that coin, Jerry. And, and you know, fortunately, we had some time to visit about this in length, is that there are pros and there are cons to any type of untethered development. And that's, I think that's what we're dealing with here. We've had an opportunity show up uh, that the state legislature addressed, the public voted forward with, and now the counties and the cities are mandated with oversight. And it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, so how, how, do you, how do you move forward in a proactive manner? And, and also, I think what I look at from an economic development standpoint is how do we move forward in a sustainable manner? How do we, how do we build, build this forward, this industry forward? And as, as we look, there's a lot of questions that come into play. The influx of, of opportunity and businesses in the countryside is, has made a, a radical transformation. We see it visually. Uh, we see it at the valuations of property. Uh, we see it at the investments these business owners are making locally. I mean, I can, I can tell you several businesses here that are just doing wonderfully because of this new growth. And one of the one things we looked at that for in the agriculture sector, for every 100 jobs created directly, there's an extra 228 jobs created associated with that. So if we have 100 new uh, employees in this county, and I think we're probably close to that, if not north of that, uh, we have 300, essentially 328 new employees in this county. Well, as I've talked to my economic development committee, I said, you know, if I, if I were to bring to you a company that had 350 jobs, you'd be giving me the Gold Star Award tomorrow. But this is different. This is this is unique, and I, I think the um, the openness of it, the kind of the wild west concept that you hear from people uh, deserves our attention. And I don't know what that attention is, but I think having this conversation is the first step in it. In about you know voicing our concerns, voicing our opportunities, voicing the positives to it, uh, because they're they're both sides of that. Again, the goal I think should be how do we get to a sustainable model and an, an economically viable model. Uh, supply and demand will drive this ultimately, but in the interim, interim there's really some radical, fast moving change going on uh, on the edge of the, uh, the city uh, in, in our county. And, and most of us are witness to it. Most of us, have, you know, some have been benefactors, some haven't. So we'll, we'll just see. I, I remain optimistic with it, but I think the conversation uh, with our, our, our leadership of the county, with our leadership of the state is critical to, again, deciding our own fate. Don't let fate decide itself for us. Let's, let's have a voice in it. And we're back to that, the original answer for everything 
is have a voice and watch your own future destiny is going to be. This is exactly what this is. And that means getting involved. And, uh, you know, everybody needs to get involved, whether it's uh, uh, being, uh, you know, pro grow houses or not for grow houses. Get, you know, get involved. Let your voice be heard. I do know that uh, Representative Josh West uh, out of District 5 in Grove had pre uh, presented a bill to the House to put a abatement on grow houses and limiting it to 8,000. It's statewide. Right now, there's currently 10,000 statewide. Uh, it has passed the House and is now going to the Senate. So if there's anyone watching this podcast and if you're opposed to grow houses um, or if you're for grow houses, call your state senator and let them know uh, how you feel because this is going to the Senate. And uh, so we talked about your voice needs to be heard where your voice needs to be heard. Sure. Andy, I, I know we had some tough questions for you today. and You had every reason... You had every reason in the world to say, no, I'm going to be out of town. I can't do it. Uh, but we're, we appreciate you coming on with us today and uh, bringing us up to date as to what you're doing in the city and uh, within the county. Uh, we appreciate what you're doing, Andy. Uh, uh, I look forward to doing whatever I can to do my part to move this forward. Uh, I'd really like to see uh, Okima and Ofusky County be the leader uh, and not the follower. Absolutely. Hey, and Jerry, and if, if I have another moment, do you have another second or two? Sure, sure. Uh, just, just some things I want to let your viewers know about is that we haven't had a chamber meeting since February of last year because of the pandemic. April 27, we're going to have our first public chamber meeting at the Tacos El Paloma. So would love to have you there noon to one o'clock. And we'll just kind of begin again, getting back to the public voice. Uh, that is following Pioneer Day, April 24th. The chamber and the city and everybody's very actively involved, the CIA, in moving it forward. So the 24th Pioneer Day is going to happen. Sweet Home Okima is their theme. We're going to have from our branding initiative, our new apparel that is just being printed and put together now will be available for sale uh, along Main Streets or along Broadway. So, you know, bring some money and take some, uh, some new apparel home, whether it be hats, shirts, uh, stickers, whatever but we're beginning that phase of it. And then also um, the Lieutenant Governor's turkey hunt is coming up April 14 through 16. April's gonna be a pretty active month. Uh, we have 13 to 14 hunters confirmed. They range anywhere from business executives to future people that are gonna create business in Okima to movie stars. It is a interesting, interesting slate of guests that are coming. Uh, Chairman Burt Robinson has done a fabulous job making this event come together. I think it's going to be one of the best events we've had in 25 years. So pretty fascinating stuff. So thank you for that opportunity. What what movie stars are going to be there, Andy? <laughs> well, you'll have to just uh, ask me that later. Well, that's a, it's Buck Taylor, who if any of us uh, would delete any age on will remember him as newly on Gunsmoke. But for the new generation, you'll recognize that he's an actor on the current uh, show Yellowstone. Oh, good. So he's a, a very recognized guy. I've had the pleasure of hunting with him in the past, and he is a colorful addition wherever he arrives. <laughs> and he's equally as talented as a Western artist as he is as an actor. So you can pull him up and you'll see that he's kind of, kind of an eclectic guy that will be a real bonus to this community. Well, you know, the turkey hunt's really a, a good time to showcase our our uh, county and showcase our town and and yes. uh that's been how many years has the turkey hunt been in existence do you know off the top of your head yep i can tell you very easily it started april 19th 1995. 1995. that's the day well, the murr building blew up it's always going to be easy to remember well uh so well we we'll, we'll appreciate that and appreciate you bringing that information up and uh andy below this uh video i'm going to uh, include all that information. We'll include some links that they can go to to the chamber to get more information. Uh, so if anybody needs to contact Andy, the information will be below the video. Uh, there will be links to go to the chamber to get further information, be leaks to the city. Um, we encourage you to go to the next city council meeting, participate, uh, go to the chamber meetings. And Andy, again, we really appreciate your time today. In the meantime, I'd like to tell everybody to be safe, Social distance, wash your hands, wear your mask, 
and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you.